On this channel and on others, we've discussed a lot about the engineering problems with the Boeing 737 MAX series. But in my opinion, we're ignoring the real cause of the problem. America first nationalism, indulgent free market economies, Republican libertarianism, and a political system in hock to corporate lobbying has contributed to killing 356 innocent passengers. And it's not just Boeing. Once a magnificent company that is being condemned, it is a wider US economic, political, and regulatory problem. What is not required is only a short-term fix of the faulty MCAS system, which has been Boeing's only response so far. What is needed is a root and branch overhaul of the intersection between capitalism and democracy in the US. When the crashes happened, Boeing did not ground all their MAX 8 aircraft and the FAA also failed to act. American prestige was at stake, along with Boeing's commercial interests. Tellingly, after the Ethiopian crash, the US was the last country in the world to ground its 737 MAX 8 aircraft. But then you have to understand that Boeing is one of the US top 10 corporate lobbyists, contributing to both Democratic and Republican parties alike, receiving juicy defense contracts, government backing for blocking Airbus deals, and organizing more benign regulation. But in my opinion, on safety, this has really backfired spectacularly. And this has happened before. Let's look at the Challenger disaster. On January 28, 1986, the NASA shuttle orbiter called Challenger broke apart 73 seconds into its flight, killing all seven crew members. The disintegration of the vehicle began after a joint in its right solid rocket booster failed at liftoff. The failure was caused by an O-ring seal that was not designed to handle the unusually cold conditions that existed at the launch. But what we really need to understand is why NASA launched the Challenger on a day that every engineer said would turn out badly. After the disaster, the Rogers Commission found NASA's organizational culture and decision-making process had been key contributing factors to the accident, with the agency violating its own internal safety rules. NASA managers had known that the contractor, Morton Thiokol, who designed the solid rocket boosters, knew that the O-rings wouldn't seal at that temperature. But what many people don't know is this. President Ronald Reagan had planned a State of the Union speech from space with high school teacher Krista McAuliffe, who was on board Challenger. The White House put pressure on NASA to launch the shuttle against their best interests on the Sunday knowing that Reagan needed to do the State of the Union speech with McAuliffe on the Tuesday. It became impossible to cancel the launch. What really upset me, and the irony of this whole story, is that Ronald Reagan turned the disaster into an amazing PR success for himself. With brilliant speech writing, he read the poem High Flight during the State of the Union speech. And everybody remembers 
Reagan saying they reached out and touched the face of God. I'm seeing the current American president, Donald Trump, taking credit for grounding the 737s. Well, hang on there. We need to return to the day when engineers and safety ruled the day. And we need to stop accountants and lobbyists building the planes we fly in. Okay, well, thank you for listening to this rather rant video. Please make a comment below. And hopefully they have addressed some of the inherent problems with the Boeing 737 MAX 8. The truth is out there.